Good morning, Equip. How are we doing? Sorry, was that quite loud? I'm, I'm excited. I'm raring to go. A new week. <laughs> How are we? We okay? Yeah, we're doing well. Doing well for yeah. being halfway through January. We're, we're doing well. Yeah, this was meant to be Blue Monday or like Blue Week or something. Oh, yeah. I still don't understand what that whole Blue Week thing is about. It's meant to be like the saddest day of the year, Blue Monday. Christmas is done, New Year's done. There's nothing to go until, um, I don't know, spring? Until no. Easter. Yeah. Unless you've got exams coming up, then you get those to look forward to. <laughs> or unless you've got a wee boyfriend or girlfriend, look forward to Valentine's Day, you never know. It's true. Oh, yeah. Or Robert Burns Night. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love, love a holiday. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, we do. Ross, what, what have you got to tell us? So... For, uh, for those of you that joined on our house groups last week there, thank you for coming on. They were, by all accounts, brilliant. Um, if you weren't on, um, but you'd like to be on, then just get in touch with your house group leaders. Drop them a message, drop them an email, whatever you want, um, and they'll be able to let you know what time it is. Or, alternatively, check the Instagram. There will be a post has gone up. Uh, Corin has put it up for us uh, and you'll be able to find out the time for all of the house groups so, nice. yeah. yeah definitely get involved in that I love house groups so good so get involved um, I've also I've, new year same Ailey same SU announcements love it um, we have our new um, series of um, equip events um, with SU and the first one starts back on Friday the same time, seven till quarter to nine. Um, I'm not too sure yet what that's going to be on and who's speaking, but it'll just be amazing as usual. So get on there just for some fun and to listen to God's word. Um, so that'll be on Friday. And then today, that's like too far in advance. Today, first of all, um, we have our amazing youth pastor, now senior minister of KBC <laughs> has just been conducted this morning so a big round of applause for Mark and um, we tonight um, we are going to be grilling him grilling the pastor um, at small beginnings so that'll be at seven <laughs> that'll be at seven o'clock tonight so um please be on to watch that send in we've got um i think it's on instagram or somewhere in the social media sphere um somewhere that you can type in a question for mark to to grill him to ask him questions um so please get on that and i think it'll be such a laugh um, and it'll be so good to see him back on small beginnings um for tonight so yeah and send him a wee current encouraging message and pray for him as well because um it's quite a big day for him and sarah and the boys so um yeah have him in your prayers as well but anyway what is happening right now never mind today what's happening just now just now i will be speaking on another of god's promises which is god will provide that's a good one good one but before that we are going to be talking to another member of our church family and yeah. it is colin Yay! so here he is well he's here on mine colin's here yeah he's here on mine Oh, well, <laughs> okay, he's there. How are you, Colin? How are you? I'm great. I'm good. I'm um, isolating again. I have to shield again, doctor's orders. So oh. um, working at home, doing cap stuff, um, making lots of phone calls, lots of emails, mm -hmm. keeping creditors at bay. Yeah, we're getting through, we're getting through. So, right, what we're going to do is I'm going to start and ask you some fun questions. We're going to do yeah. this or that questions. Are you ready? First thing that comes okay. into your head. Okay. Okay. Crisps or chocolate? Oh, crisps. Yes. Tea or coffee? Tea. Yeah, okay. Um, church at home or in person? Oh, in person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Summer or me. winter? <laughs> Summer, definitely. Okay. A beach walk or a mountain walk? Cool mountain walk. Yeah, I yes. think we're very similar in these. Um, <laughs> cooking or baking? Cooking. Ooh, hmm. Running or cycling? Neither. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I would say between the two, probably running. Yeah. Okay, okay. I used to do a lot of running. Paper notes or digital notes? 
Mm. <laughs> both. I do an awful lot of both. Probably do more so than paper. Yeah. That's fair enough. In these day and ages, these day, this day and age, <laughs> um, chocolate cake or vanilla sponge? Vanilla sponge. Toast or cereal? Toast. And last one, classical music or rock music? Oh, classical music. Classical. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, look at the, look at this face. Of course, it's classical. Music. I don't know. I can imagine you in the past a mohawk. <laughs> I have been to a Dire Straits concert. Oh. oh, amazing, Colin. Thank you so much for those answers. It has been um, fab to get to know you a wee bit better. But here's some more kind of in depth questions. Hopefully, we'll get to know you even more. Mm -hmm. um, so, first of all, how might we actually know you? Where might we have seen you around? Right. Okay. Well, I've been at the church now, I think, for about the best part of 10 years. I think I've been at KBC. Um, I normally go to the 11.15 when we have an 11.15. Uh, I'm not noted for my timekeeping, so I tend to think of it as the 11.30. <laughs> um, and I do the Sunday Club as well. So you might have seen me going out with the Sunday Club. Um, probably if you came to the uh, Greatest Showman when we did the cinema presentation, I was the ringmaster at the beginning and introduced people and welcomed everybody. And um, and then back in, I think it was about November, we did a little clip on cap at the beginning of one of the services. So you might as well be around there as well. Married to Fiona, wonder cook extraordinaire. So you may well have eaten Fiona's meals. Um, I've been in the background sort of stirring the pot. As it were. <laughs> so um, you talked about, about cap there. Um, mm -hmm. What is cap? Is is that your job or what, what goes on there? What do you do yeah. there? So CAP is, uh, is my job. Um, so I work for the church and I am the CAP Debt Centre Manager. So CAP stands for Christians Against Poverty. And that is a charity that was founded uh, 25 years ago this year in Bradford by a guy called John Kirkby, who got himself through circumstances. He ended up in uncontrollable, unmanageable debt. And uh, he ended up with everything in his life falling apart. He lost his home, his marriage, his, he, he lost his job, he lost, which was kind of the, the catalyst, um, lost his car, lost absolutely everything and had people banging on his door for money. And um, he had a Christian friend come alongside him and said, John, we can get you out of this. And by working with John, looking through his accounts and his situations and his circumstances and then going to talk to the creditors and setting up plans, it meant John was able to focus on getting his life back together without having to worry about people banging in, banging on the door for debt payment. That was all being taken care of through arrangements. So John got his whole life back together and got a new job and everything came back together and through it as well also became a Christian. And then one service, he felt God saying to him, right, now you've been through that, John, I want you to give it all up. And I want you to found a charity called Christians Against Poverty um to help people get out of the situation that you were in and that is your calling i'm giving you so he gave up this fantastic job back in back in finance ironically which is where he worked and with 10 pounds in his pocket he founded christians against poverty and that was 25 years ago so that's cap so i represent and work for the center which is based in kirk and Tillock, um helping people out of uncontrollable unmanageable debt all our work is normally done face to face which is what makes us unique in the way we offer our service. With lockdown, we've had to go totally online. Uh, sorry, not online, on, on phone call, remote. So we've either done it by telephone or we've done it by video call, but many of our clients don't have access to the type of technology that would enable us to do it by video call, so it's mostly online. Um, where it's been absolutely essential, an absolute must because of the other issues in the client's life we have done it face to face in the church itself where we can socially distance right across the room with all the windows open and that sort of thing so um that that has impacted us because demand for debt services across the debt advice sector is down about 70 percent on normal figures we would expect people coming through to us our center can take four new clients a month 
we've had only about two in the last three or four months. Other centres are even quieter, and it's not just us, it's other debt counselling services as well. And that's partly driven or mainly driven, we think, by people on furlough. So although their income's gone down slightly, they're saving on fuel and travel costs and petrol, they're not in town, so they're not nipping out for a coffee. Um, they've not been able to go on holiday this year, so there's money from not going on holidays. Um, and also um, the government uplifted, slight uplift in some of the benefits that were paid. Not all, but some of the benefits. But, here's a huge but, when the furlough scheme ends, when the government stops paying people's salaries, when the redundancies kick in, we are expecting a tsunami. So we would describe it as when, is a, when a tsunami comes, one of the noticeable signs of that is the tide goes out. The beaches get very long because the tide goes out a very long way because the water's being drawn in and then the wave hits. We feel at the moment we are seeing the tide going out and it's still going out and we are holding our breath and the further the tide goes out, the bigger the wave hits us. And that's we're at at the moment. So CAP Scotland has received grants from the Scottish Government to enable us to crank up our services. CAP nationally in our head office in Bradford have received central government money, which we've never had before, um, in order to train additional financial advisors so that when we get this wave hit and the work volume goes up, we've got the people in our head office to be able to process all the administration behind it. Uh, with Irene and Scott, they're the other deck coaches. And um, in between, uh, I also have my own consultancy business, which I do in between when we're not in lockdown and everything that's going on. Um, so that's been fairly quiet this year. But the, the debt side obviously is getting quite busy. That's my job. I work for the church. <laughs> hey, for the church. Wow. <laughs> oh, that sounds so good. I love that. Um, it's just like been a wee mustard seed that's been planted and then it's just grown into this. Oh, it's an amazing story. I thought since you guys are primarily um, helping with debt, so you must be quite good with like money and like working out maybe money problems and things, maybe? Yeah, we, we can, I, I can, yeah. We, <laughs> we can read a council tax bill. We can read a <laughs> pay slip. We can read a... Give you a wee, a wee maths challenge for you, see if that's... You can have a go, I've got my pen and calculator here. <laughs> well, I'll get it up for you, let's see. Right, oh, okay, it's like this, right, okay. Oh my goodness, right, okay. Let me try. Penny works five days a week for a local cafe. Her rate is six fifty an hour, and she works from, oh my life, 9 to 5.30. So she works 9 to 5, basically, doesn't she? 30-minute pay break. Does she get allowed? Oh, hang on a minute. Wait, I'm not that good. Right, right. Um, gets. Does she get paid for her lunch break? Um, no, she doesn't get paid for her lunch break. Are you sure? Because most yes. places they do pay for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so she works nine to five. So that's I think nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This brings back bad memories. <laughs> Corin and Ross are trying this too, guys. So whoever gets the first wins, okay? I think I've got the answer. It's an eight-hour day she works, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so it's an eight-hour day, so it's 6.50. <laughs> so she earns £52 a day. Will Sarah be able to pay for a new iPad that costs £800 after working at the cafe for three weeks? You might have to speed this up big time because I'm going to be here a while. <laughs> <laughs> Come no, on, guys, you can do it. I make it she won't, Ross. Is that, have you got the same answer? Yeah, I think it came in 780. 780, yep. Yeah. The other issue, of course, is she may not be able to pay for it in even four weeks because we don't know what else she spends her money on. That's part of it. With cap, you see, people people go, oh, I put all my money into an eight hundred pound iPad, and you go, yeah, but what about your council tax and your rent and your gas and lecky and your <laughs> your food and your well, is there answer that that no wait, she can't pay? Oh, oh, the answer, <laughs> she can't unless she does overtime. Corin's still going. I'm still going. Corin's still going. Come on, Corin, you've got this. Come on, Corin, show us your workings. <laughs> 
We also need to check what age what age Sarah is because if she's under a certain yeah. age, then she may be entitled to compensation or <laughs> yes. paid under the minimum wage. Absolutely, absolutely. Think big, <laughs> work smart. Okay, got it. Yay! Got hey, it. and what's the answer, Corinne? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is that a no, Corinne? Why is it a no? How much is she short by? That's a whole other question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, how much is she short by? How much more would she need to earn? Twenty pounds. Twenty yeah, pounds. So Bingo. Yeah, how many so hours? How many more hours would she need to work to earn? Oh, it? No, no, you can't do oh, it. No. <laughs> Four. Well, let's cut that one short. <laughs> I would not be able to have got that. I'm assuming it's six fifties after NI and uh, employer pension <laughs> and uh, everything. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well done. That was that was a bit of fun. I thought we'd try that. Ross, you did that in light like, speed time. Well done. Did yeah, I was yeah. impressed, Ross? Yeah. I, I, uh, coach, right there. Yeah. Just too good with numbers, obviously. <laughs> um, Colin, do you have a wee maths problem that the guys can try at home, maybe? Well, yes. I feel a bit like Dictionary Corner when you say that. <laughs> it says. Uh, so for the, for the young people, right, for the youth, here's a challenge. I want you to sit down with your family and have a guess at what it costs your family to run its home on a monthly basis. Ooh. Ooh. To sit down with your family and, 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 and check and say to them, okay, so have a guess at what, say, your rent or your mortgage is. Have a guess at what your gas and electricity bill is. Have a guess at your council tax. Have a guess at how much you spend on food and clothing and telephones and broadbands and mobile phones. And also guess how much it costs to run a car for the month and see how close you are because you're, you're, you're your mom and dad or your parents or guardians, whoever's looking after you, that they, they will have those costs. They'll know those numbers. So see how close you can get to those numbers. That's a good one. Oh, that is a good one. See what the real cost of running a home is. So um, do you have a favourite Bible verse that you'd like to share with us? I, I think, yes. The, the one, I mean, I have a number that kind of resonate with me, but the one I, I, I come back to, and it's, it's a very well-known one, and it's often taken out of context, um, but it's Jeremiah 29, 11. And it's, it's in the context of God's people had been out, had been in the exile, had been taken away, they were in Babylon, and they were, they were waiting for God to kind of show his sign that he would relieve them from the, the harshness of life that they were living and it's for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. The plans, uh, they are plans for good and not disaster to give you a future and hope. It's one of the versions. It says Jeremiah 29, 11. And I think for myself, um, I, you know, throughout life, life is not a bowl of cherries. You know, Fiona and I have been married 31 years. And in that time, we've had challenges that have hit us as a family. Um be they in all sorts of ways, it be health or be it um, whatever it might be. And, um, you know, work hasn't, because of the nature of the work that I did before CAP, you know, it would sometimes be plenty of work coming in and other times there would be leaner periods. Um, so I'd always come back to this and say, you know, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And I think during this year of COVID as well, when we're all kind of saying, you know, what, what, what is this all about? You kind of get a sense of what they, you know, God's people must have felt like when they were in exile, thinking, you know, when's it going to end? When, when are we going to be able to go back to a normal life? And I think if we look at that, we say, you know, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So just to, to finish up, um, I'm not too sure. Uh, Corin, would you like to, to pray for him um, as, we, as we finish? What could we be praying for you? For, for you for for us um 
certainly the work with CAP, which is, you know, myself, Irene, and, and Scott, Irene Woods, and Scott Proven, um, we're not seeing, as we said, many people coming forward for debt help. And we, that really concerns us, that there are people out there who are struggling. Um, so what, what we would love prayer for is to, is, is that people come forward to us to get help with their finances and help get themselves back on track. We're kind of sitting here waiting. We desperately know there is people out there need help and we desperately want them to come forward. So pray that people will come forward and keep us so busy we don't know what to do with ourselves. I want to be so busy, I wake up every morning thinking, I'm going to get it through the whole day. And that's not the case at the moment. We desperately want people to come forward and get help. So pray yeah. for that. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll pray for you just now and then uh, we'll be praying, well, for, for the next months, years, however long. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just do that just now. Um, okay. God, we thank you so much for Colin and for CAP and all the work that everyone that's involved with CAP does. We pray that you will strengthen them and strengthen their faith and that they'll really hold fast to that, um, that verse that you have plans for them and that they'll know that all of this is in your plan. Um, we pray that people will come forward for help and that these people will be able to give them that help and support and give them the good news of the gospel at the same time. In your name, amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining us. It has been great getting to hear more about what you do um, and about this, some of your story. Um, so yeah, hopefully if some of our youth see you in the church building when we're allowed back in, They'll, uh, they won't be afraid to come up and say hi. Yeah, I hope so. The Bible is completely full of God's provision as well. God bringing the Israelites out of Egypt. He provided Elijah with what he needed during a great famine. And the same with Joseph. God gives him what he need, needs even through really awful times. But why does God provide for us, for sinners? Because he loves us. We are God's children, his family, and... If we were to ask a loving mother to give us food, she will provide us with it. God cares for us and loves us more than we can imagine. And as we saw last week, and but why does God provide for us, for sinners? Because he loves us. We are God's children, his family. Um, if we were to ask a loving mother to give us food, she will provide us with it. God cares for us and loves us more than we can imagine, as we saw last week. And like a loving mother provides us with what we need, God will as well. No. But why does God provide for us, for sinners? Because he loves us. We are God's children, his family. If we ask a loving mother to give us food, she will provide us with it. God cares for us and loves us more than we can imagine, as we saw last week, like a loving mother provides us with what we need. Matthew chapter 7 verses 9 to 11 says which of you if your son asks for bread will give him a stone or if he asks for fish will give him a snake if you then though you are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him now this is amazing to hear all of this and maybe it's easy for me to say as i sit here in my warm house with enough food for the day Maybe the question has come into your head too. If God provides, why do people still die of hunger? Why do people have nothing? I would love to give you a satisfactory answer to that question, but I don't think anyone fully can. And some things we'll just, we will just never fully comprehend until we see Jesus face to face. The only thing I can do is point you back to the Bible, which gives us all we need to understand God, that he is good and that he suffers with us. Jesus told us that we would always have the poor with us, Matthew 26, 11, and it's his desire for us to meet the needs of others. We are his hands and feet now and he wants us to take our eyes off ourselves and to look out for the needs of others as a testimony to his goodness, kindness and generosity. God never said things would be easy, in fact quite the opposite. The world is full of mourning and pain and we will suffer. Paul says in the Bible, shall famine or nakedness separate us from the love of God? Of course the answer is no, but here he admits that there will be times of great hunger and leanness of clothing. 
And Jesus too faced the greatest suffering of all when he died on the cross so that we could be saved. Um, and he came down in flesh to be in and amongst our suffering. We as young Christians have to try to understand this and use what we have to love others and care for others and what we're provided with to bring God's kingdom here on earth. Thank God for everything, even in the difficult times. One day we might look back and see that those fleas gave us a huge kingdom bringing opportunity that saved the lives of hundreds. Hopefully you have been encouraged to know that you have a God who you can seek and he will give you what you need. If you need that extra bit of encouragement, maybe um, I would recommend reading The Hiding Place or the book of Job, Job, whatever that one is, or the book of Genesis. I love Genesis. Um, and be reminded of God's great promises to us. I'll finish just by praying the words of the Lord's Prayer again. Um, and You can pray along at home. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.